Titans. Fantasy is more than matched by reality. It's the longbow. From a time when bows and arrows meant business. A longbow is really a very, very simple thing. It is a bent stick. An elegant weapon, very difficult to master. What people don't understand is you have to have arms like Schwarzenegger if you want to draw a longbow. They're firing off six or seven arrows in a minute. So it's the machine gun of its day. This arrow weighs three ounces, and when I loose it, it'll be doing 193 feet a second. That was bloody close, wasn't it? Simon Stanley is one of the few men in the world able to shoot a maximum strength medieval longbow with accuracy. Just drawing the string on this bow is the equivalent of lifting his own body weight. That's not bad bearing in mind that that arrow adds blunt. Simon's skill is as a result of starting to shoot the bow at the age of six and a body conditioned by a lifetime on the farm. Simon really is medieval. We got him together with Robert Hardy, Shakespearean actor and renowned longbow expert, to reveal the secrets of the longbow. In essence, it's simply a piece of timber chosen for its strength, its density, its bendability. And so the very best possible wood to make it from is you, you wood. It is the perfect God-given spring. The sapwood resists tension and the dead heartwood resists compression and so you get a natural spring. We're going to shoot at that road sign down yonder. It's about 200 yards away. Originally they used to practice at nothing less than 240 yards for warfare. The obvious defense against the wooden spring was metal armor. And so the medieval period had its very own arms race. More powerful bows meant thicker armor, meant more powerful bows. At the height of its military use, the longbow arrow could kill a horse at 300 yards, and the right kind of arrow head would go through a cuirass, a breastplate. The greatest ever challenge, Simon, also a blacksmith, to make an authentic medieval armor-piercing arrowhead. Shot out of the right bow, it should be capable of shooting through reasonable quality armor of the time. Brave words, but how would the nifty nose cone perform under test conditions? This is ballistic putty. In effect, it's the same density as a, a body. So when it's shot at, it reacts in a similar way. Now this is metal that we're gonna put in front of it to represent armor plating. What we've got now is a body behind a steel covering, and I'm gonna fire an armor piercing arrowhead into it and see what we can do. Let's get out of the way. That's gone through. If they'd have been hit in the chest from this strike, they'd have been dead instantaneously or very shortly after being hit. You really wouldn't know what had hit you, the way it penetrated the armor of French knights who thought hitherto that they were invulnerable. The longbow terrified the French, terrified Europe, and very nearly gave the English kings the kingdom of France. The longbow dominated English warfare for four centuries, eventually being swept aside by the easy charms of gunpowder. But as Winston Churchill pointed out, the longbow for speed of shooting, accuracy, was not really outshot until the rifled barrel of the American Civil War, which is an incredible thing to think. As soon as guns unlocked the energy inside black powder, the archer was an endangered species. Time out for the longbow. It's at number three.